is up, YouTube land? So this is a weird one, right? We're recording, and it's not dark outside. Yeah. Uh, Two reasons. Daylight uh, savings actually kind of almost screwed me today, because my alarm clock is, like, just a normal one. I looked at my clock, and it was, like, 9 o'clock. I was like, okay. And, like, I was kind of uh, dozing off. And just by happenstance, I looked at my phone, and it was like, up oh, 10. I was like, oh, crap. And I had to, like, rush a shower and, like, get out of the house real quick. Yeah, the, um... It's daylight savings. It's Sunday, so we're only doing it at 6 p.m. as opposed to 8 p.m. We really can only ever do this after work, unless, for some reason, we're off of work. Um... You know, which happens if we did it on, like, a holiday or something like that. But it's been a long time since we recorded when it's a little light outside. Yeah. It's also been a little bit long since we recorded in general. It's been almost two weeks just because of weird scheduling stuff. And I know you can see all you YouTube uh, YouTube CIB Plus subscribers, but we got new comfy chairs down yeah. here. Those are got those, like, recliners that are, like... You literally plug them into the wall because you push a button and then they slowly like recline. Yep, it's super comfy. Yeah, and, uh, I'm, previously I'm... like it, down here, like the couch we had was like fine, but it was like very standard. And then we literally had a broken recliner here for like I swear like a year, if not two years. Dude, I tried to. I literally tried to give away the recliner. Like I I posted on Facebook was like free, just take it. No one messaged me. I was like, okay. I posted on a Facebook yard sale site and was like, free, it's outside my house. And then I just literally sat it outside the house and it sat there for three days and no one picked it up. I was like, people pick up around this area, people pick up anything you put out front. Yeah, especially with the uh, <laughs> the green dragon right there. You have a ton of people that are just looking for like cheap deals. Literally anything and no one picked it up. And it like doesn't look... It, it didn't look that broken. Like, it was, like, faux leather. It was fine. So I had to pay friggin' 50 bucks for the, um... To get it hauled by the... By the... Trash company. I was like, no way am I gonna have to do that. And it was sitting there for, like, three days. I was like, yep, guess I gotta... Guess I gotta do this. So that was weird. That does suck. So we're doing the, uh... Ether 7, I think it's called, section. This is the hardest section of the game. I mean, it's the end of the game, so it makes sense, but... When I was hesitating doing hard mode, it was literally just because of this. And this place is pretty small. Like, we only have, like, a couple rooms to do, but they just throw so much stuff at you. And it's so open, so, like... You saw I just got hit by, like, something that was, like, across the room. Yeah. Hey, come back here. Oh! Chad. Reflection. That was awesome. I'm also excited because I'm starting my new game. Yeah, uh, we're ending a game and starting a game today. I know, it doesn't happen too often. My game is an N64 game that everyone loved but sold very poorly back in the day. You know, it's coincidental that, you know, Matt McMuscle posted a video on it. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I watched that video. It was pretty keen. Huh? I was like, dude. I, and I It's like, actually one of those uh, not super depressing stories where it's... I mean, it had some troubles early on just getting, like, you know, like a vision going. By the way, it's, it's Conker's Bad Fur Day for N64. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it, it... But it didn't... It, I mean, it was rare when they were, like, super good, so it was mostly just, like, we have to make this as good as possible, and they were competing with Banjo-Kazooie's team, too. Well, I think the, 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 the most uplifting part of the whole thing is, like, it came out, everyone loved it, it sold very poorly, and still, Microsoft, which bought Rare, was like, yeah, you can make a remake of it, like... That surprises the heck out of me. Now, they wanted to make a new one, and Microsoft said no to that, but they allowed a remake of it. Yeah. Conquer, honestly, is something that I think fits better on Xbox. Because, like, they were still trying to do, like, mascot platformers. Like, you know, you have blinks and stuff like that on it. Yeah. But having, like, mascot platformer that's secretly edgy is, like, kind of perfect for the Xbox. But it's unfortunate that the remake, like, changed the gameplay to be more of like kind of a generic shooter I and mean, it's still it's still a very good game but i just prefer the original i i really wanted i never played the xbox one but i really wanted to do the original not even like the rare replay xbox one one not that i would ever hook an xbox one up here to, 
to record. One day I want to do Perfect Dark, and if we do Perfect Dark, I'm doing that on a rare replay. Is there, did they, like, make a lot of, like, quality of life improvements? <laughs> it just runs at 60 FPS, instead uh, of, like, literally 10. Yeah, yeah. You're right, on the S64, it does run really poorly. Conker's runs... Conker's is weird because it's a 64 megabit cart, which is the biggest cart they use, but it doesn't require the expansion pack. It's kind of bizarre. Conker is just, it, ha it needs a lot of memory because it's just such a huge game and also has literal voice acting, which is just like, how in the world did Rare do that? Like, everyone has full voice acting. Yeah. Yeah, literally everything. I think I've talked about this before, but it's a good example while we're watching Dead Space. So, back before the HD days of gaming, I would say probably like the early to mid 2010s, the thing that stopped your ideas the most was technical um, interference. Like, you had this really great idea for a PS2 game, this, like, big open-world PS2 game. Well, guess what? It's on the PS2, which is super weak, right? So you probably had to tone it down or whatever. Nowadays, because of... And within reason, obviously, because stuff like Starfield... Uh, I'm not... I'm sorry. Stuff like... Uh, what's that Vaporware game that they've been working on for, like, 15 years that just came out on Alpha? The big uh, space one? Uh, uh, Star Citizen? Star Citizen. Oh, okay. Stuff like Star Citizen, like, exists... And obviously wouldn't run on consoles and whatever. But, like, for the most part, nowadays, the only thing stopping you is, like, time, a publisher, or money. It's, like, it's a completely different kind of thing. And I think that's why a lot of times I respect, like, what they could have, what they did back in the day with less. Yeah, Star Citizen is the primo example of a team having unlimited resources and unlimited time. And they constantly change their scope and expectations. And it's just a game that... This is Star Citizen is the encapsulation of giving developers free reign, and they will never produce a product. And it's one of those things where publishers are like an evil, like especially the big publishers because they have the money and they want to ship products. But you need that publisher interference to get developers to have a vision to complete a product. And because Star Citizen does not have it, that game is going to be in development for the next twenty years. I mean, look at like all the Kickstarter ones, like like. What was it, uh, Tim Schafer's Double Fine, whatever, $5.5 million, or whatever the meme is, like... 3.3. 3.3. You really need a... You really need a suit that's, like, a reasonable suit, like, yelling at you. Yeah. You know? Like, you need, uh, I feel like Nintendo does that pretty well. Like, their suits, like, give them time, but at the same point aren't like, okay, you can't make... Zelda Tears of the Wind, whatever, take a billion years, you know? <laughs> Except that Tears of the Kingdom took six years, and it's, like, the same game as Breath of the Wild. But Zelda's a special exception. It does seem like even their second-party teams... I mean, Retro didn't ship a product for eight years, and, like, they got away with it. Um, one of my favorite second-party Nintendo Studios is Next Level Games, who made, like, Luigi's Mansion 3 and Punch-Out for Wii. They just did Mario Strikers on, uh, Switch... They did the original Mario Strikers too, and they are clearly a very talented team. And like Nintendo gives them time to like make their games. But yeah, that's I guess seeing stuff like the two great examples for N64 is Conquer and them porting Resident Evil 2 to one cartridge is like that to me is like super crazy um, accomplishment. And it, it wasn't, like, a publisher, it wasn't money, it was more like, what can we physically do given yeah. the limitations? anyone that's interested that hasn't watched it yet, uh, look up, like, a video of, like, the making of Resident Evil 2 64 port. It is incredible what they accomplished. There's so much trickery to, like, make the FMVs look, like, half-decent and, well, like, just include everything in the game. They put a two 700-disc, uh, 700-megabyte-disc game onto a 64-megabyte card. Yeah. Which is, like, and they added stuff. They, like, added a small amount of stuff. Like, it's crazy. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, Star Wars. Like, the original Star Wars movies, like, the reason they're so awesome is they had less and they had to do more with less so a lot of times they had to get very uh they had to use trickery you know they had to use miniatures for the death star and they had to really take their time 
Whereas even the prequels were like, they had all this money, they had all this time, so all they had to do was just sit there in front of a green screen and go, oh, we'll get it in post. And it's the same for the sequel ones. It's why John Carpenter's The Thing is awesome. It's all practical effects, because they couldn't just be like, just send it to the, uh, send it to the crew, uh, down in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, in editing, or the, uh, the FFX team, you know what I mean? Like, literally they had to, to figure out these problems using what they had, and that's a lot of times where great art comes from. Yeah. And it's not to say great games can't come out nowadays, I mean, this game's obviously awesome, but it yeah. makes, it like makes this game, a lot more. So this game is really good, but remakes are kind of a cheat in that yeah, uh, philosophy, because they have a basis to work off of. Alright, Hogwarts Legacy, everyone seems to really love. Yeah. Just as an example, that they can still make good games nowadays. Which is crazy, considering WB, the publisher, it has been going on, like, a ridiculous, like, cutting spree on everything. Yeah, but I'm I don't think... I'm surprised they had the time, they had the money and time to do I that. think even the WB execs uh, know not to cut Harry Potter. <laughs> An open-world Harry Potter game, like, talk about the most money-making idea ever. True. I don't know, they did the same thing with, like, every single DC thing, even the stuff that makes money like Batman. Like, The Batman with Robert Pattinson made a ton of money, and they're like, eh, I don't know if we'll make another one. It's like, what? <laughs> like, most people loved it, it made a ton of money, and they're like, eh, I don't know, we might axe the whole thing. It's like, okay, I guess. But like I said, you know, with some lim there's some limitations nowadays. You can't just be like, you can't get four times the detail. We're gonna need, no wait, it's 16 times the detail. <laughs> We're gonna need four times the map. You, I mean, you can't just do that out of nowhere. Like, there are still technical limitations, but it's not nearly like it was back in the day. Like, the fact that they put Elder Scrolls Morrowind on the freaking original Xbox. I mean, I know the game doesn't look good, but it's like just a huge freaking game and you're like yeah the original xbox is like strong for its time but holy crap it was not a pc i feel like uh, yeah especially since like some like xbox centric you know like the pc original games i got sequels on xbox like deus ex and thief uh were both uh cases of that yes but the xbox sequels had very limited scope in terms of like the biggest problem with consoles is just system RAM, so you just can't have, like, big, huge environments while also chasing, like, mug graphics. So, Deus Ex and Thief 3 were, like, cases of, like, uh, very tiny environments. Like, especially, like, dude, the original Deus Ex has gargantuan environments, and Thief is one of the most, um beloved uh stealth games even to this day because of how like real and open everything feels and then they made it thief 3 and it was like a sectioned off like kind of whatever game and it's like okay thanks i think that uh I, I think this isn't a controversial statement to say over the last 10 years consoles have caught up a lot more to pcs than they were 20 30 yeah. years ago and also like uh the clear um, AAA move to make in terms of money making is to make a high end like console game and then port it to PC, not the reverse anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they are definitely not making like PC builds of like games and then downpointing at the console, um, because any like PC exclusive like you know like World of Warcraft or like Star Citizens or something like that like just will not like work on console at all. We should do a thing where we play like all the weird console PC games that were ported to console that shouldn't exist, like Diablo for PS1, Warcraft for PS1, um, Half Life for PS2. That's actually the first way I played Half Life is for the PS2, and like I played it the whole way through on PS2. Because we didn't have a PC good enough to, to, to play it. Yeah, uh, I remember playing Half-Life 2 on <laughs> Xbox. Uh, looking back, that's an awful port, but that's the only way that I was able to play it. What? X? Hello? No! <laughs> There's nothing there! Zero out of ten. 
They're waiting for you, Gordon, in the test chamber. Why don't I just become the guy who plays 20-year-old PC games, 25-year-old PC games? It is one of the most comfy avenues you can go for. I mean, Deus Ex Thief, System Shock 2. Is System Shock 1 good? I never hear anything about it. System Shock 1 is good, but it is a very, very, um, game that has become antiquated mm. with time. Even more than, like... I mean, you could say the same thing about, like, Deus Ex 1 and, like, Thief 1, but I think those games still hold up to the day once you get over the, like, learning curve. Um, but uh, System Shock 1 without mods, <laughs> good luck. Got it. Uh, how do I... I've heard, uh... I've heard the same's kind of true of Left 4 Dead 1. Like, there's literally no reason to play Left 4 Dead 1 when 2 exists. I guess so. That, I was watching a video on it. Yeah. I, I really want to play it's, that game. It seems very similar. Oh. Dude, when I practiced this part yesterday, that one just blew up by itself somehow. I don't know how. So I was like, where maybe do I... Maybe you fired that cannon near it or something? Yeah, maybe. Oh, we're only, uh... Two weeks away from Resident Evil 4? Dude, I, I'm getting so many recommended videos for Resident Evil 4 Remake Demo. Like, I'm getting recommended videos of, like, people playing it. Yeah. Of, of people... I mean, it's a game that, obviously, is absolutely humongous. Right, but It right. is annoying. But it's, like, to the point where, like, I saw Bakba Soup do, like, a speedrun of the demo. Like, yeah. come on. I saw someone, uh, like, do an in-depth anal analysis of the demo. I'm like, Bruh. The good thing is that the only thing that they're spoiling is the village section, and I really doubt that Capcom's gonna change the village section that much. Yeah. So, the thing I'm the most interested in is the castle and, uh, hi. I would say I'm most interested in, actually, the, uh, the island, if yeah. it's still in the game. Because that was clearly something that was a little rushed. I was gonna say that before I got interrupted. By these rude necromorphs. Come on, necromorphs. But man, talk about, like, not wanting to, uh, give anything away and just seeing it everywhere. I'm literally gonna have to take that home the day it comes out and just be like, guess I'm gonna start playing. Yeah, you, you really have to. It sucks, because I, I really like to take my time with stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you should, like, borrow, like, Drew's PS5, like, now. <laughs> or, uh, very soon and then set it up. Yeah. Just lame. That's oh. one thing I, I understand. What the? That, that was, was cool. That was definitely a glitch. Yeah. Okay. So I definitely understand why people are so obsessed with playing stuff like right when it comes out. But if one thing I've learned from gaming over the past five years is like... That oftentimes is not the right thing to do, because, like, a lot of times stuff just comes out and gets, like, heavily ported and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> so, like, when people are like, oh, I got Call of Duty, uh, Modern Black Ops Vanguard World War II Boogaloo, and it's not good on release, I'm like, oh my god, really? And then they'll put, like, a video two months later and be like, actually, it's good now. It's like, oh my god, really? I can't believe it. It's so amazing. I'm I've been watching a lot of videos. I didn't know there was a term for it, but live service games? Oh my god. They are such a dumpster fire. Oh my god. Like, when Halo Infinite comes out and it's like, we have a, a roadmap for the next... Oh Two my years. god, and dude, like, Halo Infinite and 343 Industries in general. And they like What give up. a horrendous studio. Yeah, and they like give up on it in like five seconds or like don't come out in time. It's just awful. 343 ever since they were like conceived a decade ago is like, honestly, I don't really care because I don't care about Halo at all, but 343 Industries is the worst AAA studio in the world. By far. Imagine taking... And that's like accounting for like... I was about to say Blizzard. I hate Blizzard, and, like, they are, like, really bad at, like, 
meeting deadlines, but, like, when they make stuff, it's good. It's just they take too long. But, like, dude, 3 for 3 is, like, not only are they, like, really slow, but when they put out stuff, it's junk. It is just junk. Well, literally, imagine taking... So, no one can argue that Halo is Microsoft's flagship franchise. And imagine just screwing it up more and more for the past 10 years. Dude, when they did the Master Chief Collection... For the first 6 to 12 months, matchmaking was broken, and all they were doing was, like, you know, porting and, like, remastering the original games. They already had the source material, and they still messed it up. I would say... Oh! Nicole! This is a concept that really hasn't been brought up since this game. And it's just basically about how, um... Uh, oh god, I already forget his name. The doctor that was the antagonist throughout the entire game. Uh, do you remember Spencer? <laughs> uh, Dr. Zayas. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't remember. Uh, Mercer? Mercer, right. Hey! Mercer, like, was basically gifted with the, uh, like, the knowledge to communicate with the marker, and Nicole, like, I guess used his research to tell the marker to stop, which is, like, bringing the marker back to its creation point. Oh. That's basically the reason why this marker, uh, goes inert when you return it back. But it's something that, like, they drop, like, after this game. Oh. The sad thing is that Jacob Temple was, like, alive until, like, Chapter 11, and then he just got killed off at Mercer. You've already had visions of your brother, and you definitely weren't faking it. It's over. We're whole again. For Jacob's sake, I'm not going to ask again, Krauss. No, I know people have died. Then just do it. I've got nothing left to lose. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's better this way, I think. You'll never recover. Neither will you, you idiot. Why do you think you're immune? <laughs> 